Welcome to John Harden High School. We're here for 17th District Action. This is the opener. The homestanding John Harden Lady Bulldogs are welcoming in the Central Harden Lady Bruins. And again, uh, this is opening night. And again, it's a bit of an odd opening night as normally these teams would have played a number of games going into their district opener. And they would have had scrimmages in several games at least but this is the start for both of these teams, a cold uh, group of Lady Bulldogs and Lady Bruins coming in tonight to play their first game. Now, again, around the state, the season started January 4th. Hardin County Schools kind of waited a week to see how everything went and, and make sure uh, that, that we weren't going to be shut down again. But uh, here we are. We're ready to go. Uh, Christina Covington-Jones leading her Lady Bruins and uh, Nikki Coleman leading her Lady Bulldogs in both of them 0-0. Uh, I'm sure both very excited about the new season. They both kind of have a tough start uh, to their season. Uh, Lady Bruins will be playing uh, Bargetown later this week and E-Town coming up, and, and John Harden will be playing E-Town and North Harden. Uh, in fact, that is another game that's going on right now uh, across town in Radcliffe. I believe it's at North Harden. And uh, after the first quarter, it's the Lady Panthers of E-Town, who are already 3-0, playing three games last week, up 20-10 to on the Lady Trojans. Uh, tonight, however, we've got uh, a young John Harden team, but an experienced John Harden team. They did lose two of their top three scorers from last year uh, in Brooke Graham and Mackenzie Graves, but they return a talented young group. Uh, led by Sharon Tidwell, the freshman, who was, who was their leading scorer as an eighth grader last year, averaging 12 and 6, 12.6 rebounds a game. Jaden Young, uh, the junior, who's kind of been the, the stalwart for this team for several years. Uh, uh, Destiny McAllister, who's a freshman as well, really came on late last uh, season. And then, uh, to me, the whole key to their uh, to their team is the play of point guard Kiana Clay and, and, and Kiana Clay. Number 12, if she handles the ball well, this can be a really good team. And uh, we'll meet several others of the Lady Bulldogs. Now, one of the things you'll see on the other side is a lot of girls playing, but we certainly uh, have an experienced group. Um, obviously, the, um, the two sets of twins, the Lindsays and the Kendricks, uh, are four of the uh, five top leading scorers, and they're all returning for the Lady Bruins. Uh, Kanai and Caden Kendricks, um, the seniors, uh, Alyssa and Monica, Lindsay, the juniors, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, be hearing a lot from them, but uh, Central Harden has a lot of girls, and they'll be playing uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of girls tonight. Uh, one of Coach Covington-Jones' keys uh, to the game tonight, one of her biggest concerns as I talked to her earlier was just conditioning. They haven't played a real game. They uh, a lot of times the first few games getting into playing shape is difficult. On the other side, it's just the f uh, uh, for, for uh, Coach Coleman, it's just the idea that they haven't played anybody else yet. They really have no measuring stick other than playing themselves. So both teams very optimistic, very hopeful, and um, looking forward to a good ball game tonight. Uh, again, we're getting close to tip-off, and we'll be having the starting lineups announced in just a moment. Uh, but again, we're uh, again excited to, to tip this off with 17th district action for the first action for the Hardin County Schools uh, of the year. Uh, it is in a scattered house tonight. We've got good social distancing going on around here tonight. And um, referees are in uh, wearing their masks. I think they're going to take them off for game time as are all the teams. They have their masks on until they're on the floor. And I will turn it over now. I believe they're going to... Are they going to announce starting lineups? Is this another change? <laughs> A little bit of confusion on opening night. As I said, ah, here we go. Let's turn it over to the John Harden PA announcer for the starting lineups.
As you notice there, as we've gotten these starting lineups announced, one of the things you might notice is the difference in what that looks like. None of the Lady Bruins out there to make a, a line for their teammates to run through. And, and the Lady Bulldogs, three girls standing out very far apart and their teammates running back and forth to, to give them a high five as they get ready to get started here. So a little different than we're used to, but the uh, starting lineups have been announced. This is Paul Gray with you calling the action. And uh, we will not start with a jump ball. That's another change here. The Lady Bruins will start with it in the first half, and in the second half it'll be the Lady Bulldogs. Kanai Kendricks inboundsing to Monica Lindsay. Lindsay on the right. She's going to put up a three to start it off. Just in and out. Rebound fought for into Alyssa Lindsay. And in the bucket for Alyssa Lindsay to get the first two points of the season here. Deep pass down the floor. Alyssa's going to steal that one as well. The pressure was a lot. Nice pass from Kanaya to Caden Kendricks. Great ball movement for the Lady Bruins. Jaden Young inbounds and Kiana Clay with the ball. A lot of pressure in the backcourt. Tipped out from behind by Kanaya Kendricks. Caden Kendricks tripping over Rihanna Butler. There's Monica Lindsay in the passing lane. Down the lane for a layup of her own. Powell called. The basket will be good. The foul is on number three, Jaden Young, her first, and Monica Lindsay will go to the line to try to finish off the three-point play. So fast and furious action early here. I know Coach Kojo wants to run and run and run, and she'll uh, rotate players to do it. So three-point play for Monica Lindsay, the leading scorer for last year's team. Paige Gray on the defense back on Christine Kettle. Hake, the ball is knocked loose. There's Monica Lindsay picking it up, going the length, giving it off to Caden Kendricks. Can't quite finish. Good defense. Jaden Young, rebound by Kiana Clay. Trying to get it up the floor. There's Destiny McAllister, 21, trying to bring it up against Alyssa Lindsay. A little bit of hand checking, and they'll call Alyssa Lindsay for the foul. Seen a couple of turnovers already by the John Harden Bulldogs. Tight man defense by the Lady Bruins. Rihanna Butler gets it to Christine Kettle. Hey, pump fake, thrown opposite to Kiana Clay inside. McAllister bucket, Destiny McAllister, her first of the year. And again, Destiny McAllister showed a lot of promise late last season. Moving the ball, Kanai Kendricks, two touches and balls up. It's going to be Jaden Young with the rebound. Tipped away, Kanai Kendrick. She's got the ball, giving it up to her sister. Can't quite handle it. Ball off of her knee. Turnover back to John Harden. Inbounds in Kiana Clay. Looking for somebody open right now. Nobody gets it into Rihanna Butler. Back to Clay. Pushing it up the floor in a hurry. Butler for three from the right side. Just off. Alyssa Lindsay with the rebound over Christina Kettlehake. She's going to bring it up herself. Looking to the left to Monica. Monica Lindsay. Oh, in and out. But they're going to call a foul on Rihanna Butler. And uh, it looks like Monica will shoot three. Butler's first foul. Team second. 
It's the end of the first half. It's E-Town Lady Panthers 43, North Arden Lady Trojans 19. According to my source, E-Town Lady Panthers shooting the lights out from three-point range. <laughs> Lindsay knocks down her first free throw. She was over a 60% free throw shooter last year, one of the better free throw shooters for this um, Central Harden club. Yeah, shot 67% last year. This is the second, but it's a, it's a three shot. They're all running after the ball, but there will be another shot here. And she was fouled in the act of shooting a three-point shot. Five fifty-five to go in the first period, eight to two, Lady Bruins. Lindsay will knock down another free throw. So Monica Lindsay off to five quick points. She again was the leading scorer last year for this team with 17 points a game. Inbounds to Jaden Young, back to Kiana Clay up the right side. Kaniya Kendricks has the best hands uh, and the, is probably the best defensive player in the region, but she's prone to to reaching. Uh, making, creating a lot of turnovers right there, creating the foul, which she's prone to do as well. Callister crossing half court. Behind the back move, going left, working on Monica Lindsay. Young into Kettlehake in the lane. Knocked away. Kettlehake was able to get it back. Alyssa Lindsay had it. McAllister knocking down a three. She's got all five of the John Harden Bulldogs points right now. Not a lot of movement right now. There's Alyssa Lindsay launching a three-pointer, not in. Kiana Clay with the rebound. Her second pass in the lane, knocked away by Caden Kendricks. That is already a fifth turnover on the John Harden Lady Bulldogs. Foul on Jaden Young, her second already, and that'll get Sharon Tidwell off the bench. You may have noticed Sharon Tidwell, the leading scorer last year for uh, the Lady Bulldogs, uh, not on the floor to start the game. Uh, just trying to switch it up, said Coach Coleman. When asked about that situation, she will check back in. She, again, she averaged 12 a game last year. Mallory Reed has checked in for Paige Gray for the Lady Bruins. Offense moving a little bit now. Been a lot of just standing and shooting when uh, they're not in the break. Turnover again. Destiny McAllister creating that turnover. Second turnover for the Lady Bruins. Knocked away, but uh, the Lady Bulldogs will retain possession. Clay to trigger the inbound. McAllister at the top with the ball. A little bit of confusion now in the offense, but now moving the ball better. Nice pump fake, but good defense by Alyssa Lindsay. Attempted back door cut, but picked off by Monica Lindsay. Rebound Kiana Clay. She's got three rebounds already in the game. Fast, end-to-end, -end bucket, and the foul. Kiana Clay with the basket. Foul is going to be on Mallory Reed, I believe. Diana Hilbert checking in, number five, for Caden Kendricks. D missed all last year with, uh, with a back injury, and uh, Coach Covington-Jones thrilled to have her back. She is a good ball handler and three-point gunner. Kiana Clay knocking down the free throw to make the three-point play. And we have an eight, uh, a nine to eight game with 3.50 to go. Reed from the corner, way short. Kettlehake with the rebound, struggling to hang on to it. They're gonna keep it with White. John Harden Lady Bulldogs will have that. So rebound, Christine Kettlehake. Callister will bring it up. She's been handling a lot of the ball handling duties this evening, a little more even than Kiana Clay. Trying to throw it in the lane to Rihanna Butler who got tangled up with D. Hilbert and uh, ball's gonna go over to the Lady Bruins. Another turnover, again, that is seven. 
with 3.30 to go here in the first quarter. Big number for the Lady Bulldogs, but only down one. Reed for three, not there. Sharon Tidwell with the rebound, and she is a rebounding machine. That's her first. Christine Kettlehake bringing it up the sideline, gets it back to Tidwell, who's going to drive it. She's going to take the shot, but couldn't. Just watching the officials to see what was going on there. Uh, Tidwell threw it up and then caught it herself. Uh, they're saying it was a shot that she rebounded. So we'll give her a rebound, even though it looked like what would be normally considered a travel. McAllister posting up inside on Monica Lindsay. Great job by Destiny McAllister. Very physical down low. And the Lady Bulldogs will take a 10-9 lead after being down 9-3. Hilbert for three from the corner, way off. Good rebound, Kanai Kendricks, and the shot by Alyssa Lindsay is off. And that'll go out of bounds to the Lady Bulldogs. So right now, the rebounding battle being won big time by John Harden. Of course, they've turned it over a lot more, and that kind of equals the thing back out here. Central Harden really struggling from three-point range right now, not making uh, much of anything. Uh, they have not made a three-pointer yet, and they've taken about six or seven at least. Oh, for six or seven. I don't have a total on that, but it's been a number of shots. Krista Cecil, number 34, will check in for Kanaya Kendricks here for the uh, Lady Bruins. Kiana Clay going to inbounds. Tidwell in the lane, nothing there. I think they're going to call Cecil for a reach on the, uh, now they're calling on five, D. Hilbert. Sean Tidwell well short with her first attempt. Hayden Kendricks checking back in for Diana Hilbert. Two rebounds by Destiny McAllister off the free throw. Terrible boxing out, terrible rebounding, and they're just getting killed on the glass. Two rebounds there for Destiny McAllister. Cecil from three now, and she'll get it to drop. Krista Cecil, finally, the Lady Bruins are able to find the bottom of the basket. They'd scored everything else around the basket and on free throws. They're going to allow Kiana Clay just to run right down the lane. Kettle Hake with an offensive rebound. Puts it up, unable to get that one to go. Ball is loose still, and the Lady Bulldogs will come up with it. Lady Bruins have got to get some rebounding. McAllister with the ball. Man, she's feeling it right now, I have a, I, I, I believe. Into Sharon Tidwell, and that's going to be a foul on Caden Kendricks. Tidwell good on the first. Paige Gray checking in for Mallory Reed. Makes the second as well. 14 to 12, Lady Bulldogs with 1.23 to go here in the first period. Alyssa Lindsay up the right side. Caden Kendricks trying to drive the ball. Again, a lot of standing around on the outside, just throwing the ball around the uh, 
three-point arc and not much of anything happening in the lane except for a, an occasional drive to the basket. Monica Lindsay is able to drive and get the score. So she's back on the board with her seventh point of the, uh, of the game. It looked like Destiny McAllister just tripped up a little bit. They're going to call that, I believe, on Caden Kendricks for her second foul. One and one. Sean Tidwell with the foul on the uh, on the attempted rebound, uh, pushing in the back, I guess. So Caden Kendricks will have to sit down with a couple of fouls. Mallory Reed back onto the floor. Both Lindsay twins. Mallory Reed, Paige Gray, and Krista Cecil on the floor. Drive by Monica Lindsay, unable to uh, get the ball to fall there. Good rebound by Sharon Tidwell, her third of the game after not starting the first quarter here. Kiana Clay from the free throw line, wide open, is going to knock that one down. So Kiana Clay off to a good start with five here in the first quarter. Alyssa Lindsay. Just looks a lot like the Lady Bruins are just playing one-on-one -on -one ball and unable to do it because when they get in the lane, it's one on three or four. Everybody else standing around the three-point line. Destiny McAllister at the horn almost gets it to go. It's the end of one. Lady Bulldogs 16, Lady Bruins 14. A bit of a rough start for the Lady Bruins and a great start for these Lady Bulldogs. This is a Hardin County Education and Community Television Student Production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. Blue, uh, Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon. Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company that is offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment today, call Michelle at 270-763-3186. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of Exit 91 on Interstate 65, Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. Aton Exterminating is a locally owned, family-run pest con control company and has been serving Hardin, Meade, Grayson, and Nelson counties and the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point, or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. I would say the difference tonight, to this point, the Lady Bulldogs, much more aggressive going to the basket. Right now, the rebounding edge is 11 to 3. Uh, I may have missed one or two here, so that's an estimate. But in the unofficial stat book, 11 to 3 on rebounds. So they're dominating the rebounding battle now. Again, they've turned it over seven times to Central Harden's three. So some turnover issues inside. Christine Kettlehake, good pass from McAllister. And Kettlehake will score the bucket. Again, McAllister just triggering everything for them so far in this game. Turnover by the Lady Bruins, backcourt violation. Kettlehake will bring the ball in bounds. It'll be Clay, the point guard, bringing it up the floor. For the Lady Bruins. Good drive. Kettlehake, she's going to get her own rebound again. There is a tie up. Kettlehake, another rebound. So that rebound edge continuing to grow. And uh, 
the Lady uh, Bulldogs turning it over less than they were early in the first quarter. Over to Gray on the right side on the wing. She's holding and looking. Reed at the top of the key. Pump fake. Drive. They're going to call a, a travel on that, and that pump fake drive uh, often results in a travel. I'm not sure why, but it does. Another turnover for the Lady Bruins. 18-14, 7-12 remaining in the second quarter. Kiana Clay slowly bringing it up over half court now. Alyssa Lindsay guarding. Throw inside to Kiana Clay. Tidwell is able to corral the ball. Hilbert on Kettlehake. Destiny McAllister on the cut and the basket and the foul. Foul called on 15, Paige Gray. Juliana Stith checking in, number 24, checking in for uh, Alyssa Lindsay. The eighth grader is a phenom. I've seen her play a lot, and Juliana Stith can really play ball. Monica Lindsay bringing the ball up the floor, and again, five players standing around the arc. There's a little bit of movement. Good pass to Diana Hilbert. She's double teamed, looking to give it up. Monica Lindsay with the ball. She's going to try to reset. Gray at the top, giving it up to Stiff. Into the offense now. Stiff, pump fake. Move there. Gray looked at the basket. Decided not to go. Pass to Stiff. Back out to Lindsay. Lindsay for three. That is good. There's a little bit of ball movement there, so that's a bit of an improvement. Uh, a little bit of offense run leading to a good three-point shot. Play up the right side going by Juliana Stith. They're going to call a jump ball. Stith got her hand on the ball. Tidwell posting up and easily going around Monica Lindsay. Easy bucket there. Her first field goal of the night. She's got four points. Hilbert to Lindsay. Now we're getting a little more movement. Easy to the basket, but unable to finish. Monica Lindsay, rebound Kiana Clay. Turnover. Knocked away by Mallory Reed. Given up. Gray with the layup. She's able to get that one to go. Her first bucket of the night. Good steal. Mallory knocked it away, and Monica Lindsay was able to get that. First turnover of this quarter. Sharon Tidwell with the rebound and the bucket. She's. Stiff will pick up her first foul of the game. Paris Parker checking in for Christine Kettlehake. That's her first break of the evening. 5.04 to go. 25-19 Lady Bulldogs and Tidwell completing a three-point play there with the uh, free throw. 34, Krista Cecil checking in for Paige Gray. Right now, the uh, Lady Bruins just looking for some rebounding. Uh, nobody has rebounded the ball at all so far. They don't have a rebound in the second quarter yet. Mallory Reed trying to post up down low. She's got a size advantage, but unable to get her the ball as we uh, continue to watch the Lady Bruins stand and watch the game from outside the three-point arc. Now a little bit of movement, and, and D. Hilbert able to get a shot, but rebounded, finally a rebound, Monica Lindsay, and she'll go up and be fouled. Fouls on Kiana Clay, her first. Team's fifth. First attempt, no good. Jaden Young checking back in with two fouls. She'll get Sharon Tidwell, who was very effective in the game. 
Very effective, as always. There's Monica Lindsay knocking down the second of two, scores 26 to 20, 432 remaining. Lady Bruins won both matchups last year. The second one was about like this, very competitive throughout. John Harden leading most of the way uh, with a late surge by the uh, Lady Bruins. That's one of the questions is can this rotation of about six or seven girls with John Harden keep up with the 10-person rotation of the Bruins? And there's another turnover, this time by Young. It's Lindsay again taking the ball coast to coast for a bucket. Another turnover for the Lady Bulldog. 13 points already for Monica Lindsay of the 22 scored by the Lady Bruins. Kiana Clay driving around Julianna Stith. Good help defense by Mallory Reed, and they've got her boxed in on the line. Timeout call by Coach Coleman as uh, Sharon Tidwell is about to check back in as well. This is an HCEC TV student production at Division of Hardin County School. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, Blue Ribbon Renovations, a Mark Harris Company, and E-Town Exterminating. Tune in weekly. For all local HCEC TV programs airing on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable's Channel 2, as well as Spectrum Channel 184. All HCEC TV programs on the HCEC TV YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel today to get your local community sports and events. Special thanks to our HCEC TV crew working on the cameras this evening and Dale Mings in the truck. Thank you to all of you and what you're doing tonight. 3.35 to go here in the second quarter. 26-22, the home, home team is up. Jaden Young to inbounds. Clay cutting to the ball. Inside to McAllister, who had posted up on Mallory Reed. Unable to get it to fall. Rebound. I'm going to give that to Hilbert, even though uh, Reed was the one battling for it at first. Reed shot up, and it's good. Mallory Reed, her first bucket. Mallory Reed did not get to play. You see the knee brace on. Uh, bad knee injury last week kept her out all year, and it's good to see her back. She is a huge asset to this team. Down the lane, there's Reed with a rebound. Kiana Clay couldn't get it to go. Ah, turnover. Bruins. Callister driving on Monica Lindsay. Ball up, McAllister rebound. She goes back up, can't get it. Hilbert with her second rebound. Turnover. Clay with the ball inside. She traveled before she could score. Alyssa Lindsay checking in for D. Hilbert. Uh, good as Paige Gray checks in for Mallory Reed. Again, a good uh, series for Diana Hilbert and Mallory Reed. Good hustle and good activity on the floor. Harper Hines had checked in. Just a little overthrown. Krista Cecil looking for Paige Gray cutting through the lane. Two twenty-two to go here in the second period, 26-24. Blue ball kicked. Paris Parker picked up Alyssa Lindsay. She's trying to give it up. There's Monica. Monica looking for Krista Cecil inside, who gives it up to Paige Gray. That ball put up just quickly, thrown to the basket. Uh, not a good idea. Another turnover by the Lady Bulldogs on the, seat, on the uh, possession before. Paris Parker is in the game, the sophomore. Tidwell down the lane. Paige Gray on the foul, her second. 
Sean Tidwell will have two free throws. Tidwell off on the first. Katie Gray checking in for Paige Gray. And Tidwell knocks down the, the second free throw. Monica Lindsay pushing the ball off the floor. There's Alyssa open for three from the wing. High Archer is way off the mark, and that will be out of bounds. Again, Kojo is going to sub in. Diana Hilbert in for uh, Alyssa Lindsay. I don't think Coach liked that catch and shoot on the first pass of the possession. They've been much more effective when they've moved the ball and, and moved their bodies around the court a little bit. Six remaining here in the first half. Again, it's 27 24 after the Tidwell free throw on the previous possession. Callister on the drive, giving up to Jaden Young. A little bit of motion offense out top. Paris Parker almost lost that one. Tidwell is able to pull that one down. Thrown in the middle. Parker comes up with it. Looked like a double dribble there. McAllister runs it down. Young for three, just off. There's Harper Hines, who's entered the game again with the rebound, bringing it up the floor. Double teamed right now. Gives it up to Diana Hilbert, who's going to take a three. Bucket, Diana Hilbert again tying it up. Hilbert is the three-point shooting specialist. I'm sure Coach Covington-Jones thrilled to have her back on the floor. Clay driving, drawing the defense. Paris Parker for three, not able to get it. Gray with the rebound, but stolen from behind. Harper Hines with the block, foul. Well, off on the first. Off to a rough start here from the free throw line is Tidwell. Last year, just a 47, actually a 48% free throw shooter. Second one off as well. Rebound, Krista Cecil. Just 3.9 seconds. The Lady Bruins are going to have to find a way to get a shot up. Half quarter tossed up by D. Hilbert with still two or three seconds. They never started the clock. Wow. Well, that will bring an end to the first half. And your home standing Lady Bulldogs 27, the visiting Lady Bruins 27 as well. We have got ourselves a heck of a ball game here in Radcliffe at John Harden High School. We'll be back in about 15 minutes with second half action. Hello and welcome to this special interview with one of our longtime sponsors of HCEC-TV and Brandenburg Telecom's live sports coverage. Today we're joined by Josh Hubbard who is the president of West Point Bank and West Point Bank has been a sponsor from the very beginning which goes back all the way to around 2004 <laughs> in that way. 
that we've had uh, live sports on uh, HCEC TV and Brandenburg Telecom's Channel One. So Josh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, and uh, it's our pleasure to sponsor. We uh, really enjoy uh, sponsoring the high school sports. Awesome, and uh, we are socially distanced right now, so we're gonna remove our masks. We're modeling good behavior here. We know that mask protects us. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, right. It was, a, it was a little odd this year getting sports started. And um, we um, waited um, with every single meeting that the Kentucky High School Athletic Association had this year in summer, talking about how to open effectively and safely. So um, for many of us that live and breathe high school sports, <laughs> We were pretty um, amazed and welcomed being able to uh, bring that to you. Uh, Josh, for those at home that may not be as familiar with West Point Bank, what are some of the services that West Point Bank offers? Yes, so West Point Bank is a full service bank. Uh, we have five branches uh, in West Point, Radcliffe, Elizabethtown, Glendale, and Upton. Uh, as I said, we're a full service bank. We offer everything from your regular checking accounts to savings accounts, certificates of deposits, to any types of loans, whether it be uh, residential, uh, one to four family, primary residence loans, construction loans, uh, automobile loans, commercial loans, farm loans, you name it, we can pretty much do it. Awesome, what's the history of the bank? So actually West Point Bank was started, I believe in 1914, um, and First Breckenridge Bank Shares, which is the holding company that, that owns West Point Bank at this point, uh, purchased uh, that in, I believe, 19, mid-1980s, mm -hmm. so uh, roughly 34 years ago. Uh, so next year will be uh, 35 years uh, that, that we are celebrating the anniversary of First Breckenridge Bank shares um, owning West Point Bank. So, been in the community for a long time. Mm -hmm. What's your motto and what's your all's theme? So, uh, we are hometown banking made simple. Um, we try to uh, focus our efforts on Hardin and the few surrounding uh, counties, but primarily Hardin County. Um, the vast majority of the employees that we have uh, live, uh, obviously work, uh, go to church uh, in, in, in Hardin County. Uh, so we really focus our efforts there. A lot of our advertising, a lot of uh, the community events that we do, uh, a lot of our sponsorships uh, are centered around this community uh, in this county. Now, um, in addition to sponsoring us, like you mentioned that you help sponsor some other uh, community events and things. What are some of those? We've done the Heartland Parade, Upton Days, uh, Glendale Days, West Point Days, Hooray for Heroes, Relay for Life, um, the Buddy Walks. Uh, if, if there is something that we can do in the community to, to support this community and, and the citizens that live in it, we, we try to get involved and, and do things like that. Now, how many employees do you have? Uh, it varies, but approximately mid-40s, mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty much pretty consistent. Um, we, one thing about us, we don't have a whole lot of turnover, uh, which I think is a testament to, to our bank. Uh, the vast majority of the people that, that come to work here um, stay here. Mm -hmm. And um, with, with your employees, like you said, I think, I think they feel like a family. They do. They do. A lot of our employees... Um, um, obviously work together in close quarters, uh, but they become very good friends outside of the bank as well too. And I think that just goes uh, back to a testament of how we do business. And it's not just um, our employees, it's, it's, it's we really take the time to get to know our customers. We treat every individual um, like they are number one, uh, because they are, um, you know, we're, we're curious. We wanna know their names, you know, we wanna know about their families, we wanna know what's going on. It, it, we've always said that banking is a relationship business. Um, you know, there's a lot of banks in Hardin County. We're all selling roughly the same thing. Um, it is what it is, but I think what sets us apart and what makes us the best bank in Hardin County is the relationships uh, that, that, that we build with our customers and how we strive every day uh, to take the best care of our customers that we possibly can. Right. And um, I know that y'all have taken a lot of safety measures this year in COVID-19, we'll discuss that as well. <laughs> we have, so we have, um, COVID has obviously changed the way we bank um, a little bit. You know, we did spend some time there where we had our lobbies closed uh, and we were drive through only. Um, our lobbies are now open back up. Um, we are still monitoring the amount of people in the bank at a time. You know, we have the germ guards 
obviously we have sanitizer and masks uh, available and again trying to practice social distancing so all of our tellers are are spread apart um, you know we're, we're workstations are, are, are six feet apart from each other and again wearing masks um, but want to take the time to thank both the employees of West Point Bank and our customers um, it is different times you know we're experiencing things that we've never experienced and I can there's still times on a Friday afternoon that the drive-through is 10 or 11 cars wrapped around the building and our customers have been so patient with that uh, our employees have uh, it's not it's it, it's not easy uh, it's difficult but but they've managed and um, it's just again a, a testament to the community um, people understand mm -hmm. things are a little bit different right now and unfortunately you may have to wait a little bit longer to to cash a check or make a deposit um, or you may wait a little bit longer in the drive-through but uh, we appreciate the patience that, that that our customers are having and again appreciate uh, the employees that work for me that They've just done a fantastic job. Oh, so that's awesome. Um, why do you feel that uh, live sports coverage is important in the area? So these students um, are going to grow up uh, and be the leaders um, in our community. And we've actually had um, several uh, employees that are full-time employees uh, with me right now that started out uh, in the co-op. And a lot of these uh, younger, uh, well, a lot of these, these athletes, um, Sports is a way to teach them. Um, you know, there's there's success in sports and there's sometimes failure. And, you know, you're going to be successful in life. And sometimes, you know, things aren't going to go your way. And you need to learn how to win and you need to learn how to lose. And um, I think that sports is a great teaching tool um, about learning how to win, learning how to lose, learning how to treat one another, you know, win as a team, lose as a team. Um, so I think it's just a, a great uh, sports can be a great building block for you know how you should handle yourself and your further career and how you should live your life. A lot of valuable lessons you can learn in sports. Exactly, and um, it's just great. To Welcome back to John Harden High School. Paul Gray here, bringing you 17th District Ladies Basketball Action. The homestanding Lady Bulldogs and the Lady Bruins of Central Harden uh, tied up even at 27 apiece after one half of action uh, through three quarters, of his, three quarters of action just down the road uh, 50 to 27 the Lady Panthers up on the uh, oh just got another update there <laughs> 544 left in the fourth quarter 52 35 um, a little mini run for the uh, Lady Trojans but again uh, Maybe some first game jitters there for the Lady Trojans and the uh, Lady Panthers already with a number of games, three games under their belt. So that may have some effect, some impact, as it looks like the uh, Lady Trojans playing much better in the second half. Here we've got a great ball game. I think it's going to come down to the stretch. And one thing we have not, well, I've obviously talked about it, but I did not mention one uh, outstanding uh, person that is missing here, uh, uh, a graduated senior. I mentioned that on the John Harden side, uh, two of their leading three scores, Brooke Graham and Mackenzie Graves, had graduated, and they'd be missing those two quite a bit. But on the other side, again, we've noted here a 15 to 7 rebounding advantage in favor of the John Harden Bulldogs. Emily Bryant, uh, over a thousand point scorer in her career at Central Harden the leading rebounder for the Central Harden uh, basketball team for several years. She um, averaged uh, eight rebounds a game last year. And in the absence of Emily Bryant, there has not been a physical presence inside. Uh, a couple of, uh, the whole team has got to pick up that slack. Uh, if you look at the number of games they played, they both played 30 games last year. John Harden had 865 rebounds in those games to 975 by the Lady Bruins. That is not what it looks like. These two teams are very different teams. The physicality inside of uh, Sharon Tidwell, Destiny McAllister, Christine Kettlehake has made all the difference. Uh, and that's why we're sitting here 27-27 right now. I'd say coming in, you had to give the Bruins the advantage as the favorite. 
But right now, it doesn't look that way. Destiny McAllister has been uh, fantastic. Uh, she has nine points. Sharon Tidwell uh, has chipped in with eight. Kiana Clay with five. And so uh, Christine Kettlehake with two. Leading score for the Lady Bruins, Monica Lindsay. Uh, she's got, I believe, 14 points. I think I've counted it up right. Gray out top is going to give to Lindsay. She's open, but she's going to throw it inside. Caden Kendricks back out, cutting the lane. Alyssa Lindsay, she's coming across. Bucket and a foul. Great start. Good ball movement. Good cut across the lane. Fouls on Jaden Young, number three, her third. She had to set out some of the first half of foul trouble already, and so she's already picked up her third. So Alyssa Lindsay putting one in the basket. Free throws up, no good. Paige Gray getting after it. She's got the offensive rebound. Good, good play there. Back inside to Gray. Great look for Monica Lindsay. So really nicely done by the teammates, Lindsay and Gray there. Good hustle, good rebound, great pass. Uh, fantastic. McAllister up the left side. She's going to give it up to Rihanna Butler. Foul called, a little bit of body over there, and it looks like it's 23, Caden Kendricks, and her evening continues to be derailed by foul trouble. She picks up her third, and Mallory Reed will have to check in for her. From time to time, that has been an issue for Caden Kendricks, and she's... Uh, Headed back to a seat after just 40 seconds into the second half. Gray guarding around a Butler. Ken Kanaya Kendricks on Kiana Clay, and great defense there. A little more um, fire, a little more intensity coming out for the Lady Bruins here. A little more movement, a little more excitement and energy. Kettlehake up top, Gray guarding. Pass to Young, knocked away by Alyssa Lindsay, but Kiana Clay is able to track it down. Clay driving, Kettlehake, ooh, she walked. She tried to do the same kind of thing Mallory Reed did in the first half with the, with the pump fake and then drive, and she took an extra step. That one was a little more obvious, but again, we see that a lot, that pump fake, and then they don't put it on the floor immediately. Lindsay to bring the ball up the floor here. Gray posting up inside, calling for the ball. Kendricks will swing it. There's Reed. Great pump fake. Bucket. Mallory Reed. That's why they're excited to have her back. She adds some great shooting touch to this team who has not always been a great shooting team. Another turnover is Monica Lindsay with another steal. Kanaya Kendricks there and knocked out of bound by Destiny McAllister. Trying to get it inside to Alyssa Lindsay. Another turnover on the Bulldogs. 11 in the first half, that's their 12th. Eight on the Bruins in the first half. Reed's gonna take the pass inbounds over to Gray. Shot up, just off the mark. Jaden Young on the rebound. Butler shot up, just off. She gets her own rebound as it was knocked away, but turned over. Three on one, nice give and go from the Lindsay Twins. Alyssa getting the bucket and time out John Harden Lady Bulldogs as that has been a ferocious start for the Lady Bruins. This is a Hardin County Education Community Television Student Production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all of your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company that is offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more to explore your options or schedule your appointment today. Call Michelle at 270-763-3186. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of Exit 91 on Interstate 65, Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. 612 to go here in the third quarter. 
Eight point advantage, so a quick out of the box uh, in a minute and 50 seconds. Eight points, eight to nothing run for the Lady Bruins. Jaden Young will be bringing the ball inbounds under their own basket, and uh, for some reason, all right, the, the, okay, full court pressure, sorry, full court pressure from the Lady Bruins. It is man-to-man -man pressure. McAllister up the floor quickly. Paris Parker's gonna get it over to Tidwell, no, yep, to Tidwell inside to McAllister. Easy bucket for Desi McAllister. Her good night continues with 11 points to start us off. Lindsay up the middle here. Final from the E-Town North Harden game, 65-41 into the post to Mallory Reed. She had made a great move and could not finish it. Ball is loose and it'll go to the John Harden Bulldogs. Reed made a great move on the post and just couldn't finish it. But in Radcliffe, uh, the north end, 65 Lady Panthers, 41 Lady Trojans. So that game has come to an end. Lady Panthers continue their dominance here in uh, 17th district action. It's been over 10 years since anyone has beaten them. Jaden Young to the basket with a nice floater. Back into the game, Jaden Young, and she picks up her first bucket of the evening. Monica Lindsay driving, trying to get it in traffic to Kanai Kendrick, but that's going to be a turnover. Paris Parker coming up with it. 35-31, 4.58 and counting. There's another turnover back the other way. Kanai Kendrick's taking the ball, crossing over, going down the lane. The basket won't count. I think the foul is on the floor. Count of Clay holding. Harper Hines checking in for Monica Lindsay. Again, 35-31 here. Lady Bruins with the ball. D. Hilbert out front with the ball, guarded by Jaden Young. Hilbert looking to make a move, and the ball is thrown away as Harper Hines was cutting, and uh, Hilbert threw it behind her. Clay, the point guard, will bring it up. To Young, Hines on her. Pass to Parker, just off the mark. Rebound to Alyssa Lindsay. It looked like it was going to be picked up. There's a foul called. Kiana Clay with another foul. That'll be her third. Lindsay brings it in. It'll be Hilbert to bring it up. Trying to throw it into the post. Hines trying to get it to Mallory Reed, and uh, ball's tied up over on the sideline. Jump ball. It'll go to the uh, Lady Bulldogs. White ball. Monica Lindsay going to check back in for Harper Hines. Looks like Caden Kendricks will also be checking into the game. Coming in for Diana Hilbert. <laughs> The officials didn't realize that they had not subbed all the way in. The ball is coming up the floor with Hilbert coming off the floor. Young with the ball trying to drive on Alyssa Lindsay. She's going to get down the lane into the rim just off the front rim. Rebound Monica Lindsay up ahead to Alyssa. And she will make the bucket. Alyssa now with eight points. Uh, starting to heat up here in the second half a little bit with six. Foul on Alyssa Lindsay there. That's her second. Timeout call with 3.47 to go. Lady Bruins 37, Lady Bulldogs 31. E-Town Exterminating is locally owned, family run, pest control company and has been serving Hardin, Meade, Grayson and Nelson counties in the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. 
West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. So with 3.47 to go here in a six-point Lady Bruin advantage. Uh, with about three minutes to go in the half, the Lady Bruins were down five. Now up six, and so uh, starting to try to exert some control, but uh, Lady Bulldogs aren't going anywhere. One of the things I wondered was with the numbers that the Lady Bruins could throw at uh, the Lady Bulldogs make a, a dent late in the game in conditioning and just being tired. And so far, uh, that is probably true. Good block by Mallory Reed. Rebound, Caden Kendricks. I think that's her first of the night. And she's going to be a force in that regard. She's got a three-pointer on the way as well. And bucket for Caden Kendricks. So a big uh, series for her. Steal in the corner. Attempt at a reverse layup there. But rebound by Alyssa Lindsay. And another bucket for Alyssa Lindsay. Her eighth point of the half, of the quarter that is, and 10 on the game. Big play, another John Harden turnover, and Sharon Tidwell is going to score another bucket and get fouled. Mallory Reed foul, her second. And Sharon, Tid Sharon Tidwell will make the basket. All right, back to the action. 44-33, 247 to go. 11-point <laughs> lead. Paige Gray will check back in for Mallory Reed. Mallory's looking a little tuckered out. She's put in a great uh, third quarter of work right now. Chris Cecil checking in for Caden Kendricks. As you can see, the uh, substitutions are free. There's a couple substitutes playing about seven deep for the Bulldogs and about 10 deep, maybe even 11 deep for the Lady Bruins. In the lane, rebound by Destiny McAllister. Monica Lindsay couldn't get the bucket or the foul. Another turnover back the other way and another turnover going back the other direction. Juliana Stith checking in for the Lady Bruins. Kanai Kendricks checking out. Actually, Monica Lindsay checking out. Good ball movement from the uh, Lady Bulldogs. Blocked by Alyssa Lindsay. She's trying to leak out before they've got the ball. Scrum on the ground for it. Everybody diving and uh, timeout Lady Bruins claiming the Bru Lady Bruins had possession. I didn't see anybody with possession at any point there, but uh, they're going to give possession to the Lady Bruins and timeout Coach Covington Jones. This is an HCEC TV student production, Division of Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, Blue Ribbon Renovations a Mark Harris company, and E-Town Exterminating. Tune in weekly for all local HCEC TV programs airing on Brandenburg Telecom, Comcast Cable Channel 2, and Spectrum Channel 184. All HCEC TV programs on the HCEC TV YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel today and get your local community sports and events. Special thanks to our HCEC TV crew, uh, our students here working behind the cameras, and Dale Mings in the truck. Thank you uh, for all the hard work you're putting in and will put in on a high school basketball season, working a lot of nights. Paige Gray inbounding to Juliana Stith. Stith will bring it up against Jaden Young, crossing over, over the line. Alyssa Lindsay with the ball. Gray at the top of the key, looking to drive, gives it up to Juliana Stith. Stith down the lane, can't get anything to go there. 
Parker gets the rebound. Clay now with it. Trying to get back to Parker, and they'll turn it over. So that was a timeout, Lady Bulldogs, and they'll have the ball on the baseline. 136 to go. Lady Bruins 44, Lady Bulldogs 33. A big third quarter for the Lady Bruins. Right now it's Kanaya Kendricks, the Lindsay Twins, Paige Gray, and Krista Cecil on the floor. Clay Young, Young on the baseline, trying to make the turn. Paris Parker now with the ball driving in the lane. Ball up, just falls off. Gray fighting for the rebound, gets it up to Monica Lindsay, she's driving, has Alyssa ahead, bucket. Big combination, Alyssa Lindsay now with 12 points, 10 in the third quarter, 105 remaining here. McAllister up the right side, oh! Kanaya Kendrick's poking it loose, but they're gonna call a foul on Kanaya, her third. Close call there, the Bruin bench wanted that to be a turnover, not a foul, obviously. Calcer throwing it cross court. Paris Parker. Tidwell working on Gray. Gives it up to Young, guarded by Alyssa Lindsay. Tight defense. Parker out top. Monica Lindsay steps in front of that pass. She's going to bring it to the basket. Bucket, Monica Lindsay. Jaden Young in the open court, Parker for the shot. Parker will knock in the baseline jumper. They needed a bucket, and Paris Parker provides it. Her first two of the evening. Trying to throw it into Krista Cecil. The ball's loose on the floor. There's a scrum. They're going to call a uh, jump ball there. Possession, I believe, is going to go to Lady Bruins. Kettlehake checking in. She'll get Kiana Clay, Rihanna Butler checking in, as well as Mallory Reed checking in for Kanai Kendricks. Ball thrown out top. Alyssa Lindsay trying to get to the down the lane. Rihanna Butler's going to get it. There's a turnover. Tidwell is uh, shaken up, and they're going to stop play. 14 seconds to go here in the third quarter. The lead is 48 to 35. Callister with eight, working on uh, Lindsay. Has picked up her dribble three seconds. It's going to be Tidwell to throw it up from the elbow, off the rim, off the top, and no good. So at the end of three, 48, Lady Bruins 35. The end of the third quarter. This is a Hardin County Education and Community Television Student Production. HCC TV is the Division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all of your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company that is offering 0% interest with, and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment today, call Michelle at 270-763-3186. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of exit 91 on Interstate 65, 
Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. All right, eight minutes to go. We are starting the fourth quarter here in 17th District action. Lady Bruins 48, Lady Bulldogs 35. Paige Gray to inbounds to Alyssa Lindsay. We also have Kanaya Kendricks, Caden Kendricks, and uh, Monica Lindsay on the floor. The starting five for the Lady Bruins, starting it off. Conversation now about who is going to have possession to start this quarter. And it will be the Lady Bulldogs uh, starting with the possession. McAllister, Tidwell, Kettlehake, Parker, and Butler on the floor to start off for the Lady Bulldogs. Kettlehake inbounds to McAllister, goes through her hands, but she's got it. Guarded by Monica Lindsay up the right side. Tidwell to set the screen. Lindsay threw it easily. Good defense. Callister looking for some room. Tidwell now has it out top, guarded by Gray. In the lane, she's going to give it up to Parker up top. Parker driving, Kettlehake on the outside. Pump fake drive. There's Tidwell with the ball. Parker in the lane, loose ball, but Butler comes up with it. Callister now on the box. She has been really good down there on the box, but she's going to give it up. I thought she had a shot there, opportunity. Tidwell gives it up to Butler. Butler for three, no good. There's going to be Monica Lindsay on the rebound. Monica pushing it now. She's got Alyssa by the basket. Alyssa Lindsay with another bucket there. Alyssa Lindsay, McAllister bringing it up. 50-35, seven minutes to go in the ball game. No good, McAllister again. She looks a little tired as I think, just as I thought, they would tire out. Alyssa Lindsay on the breakout again with another bucket. I think other schools that have a little more uh, as far as depth might give the Lady Bruins some trouble. They haven't played great, but they are really outrunning right now. Lady Bulldogs is another turnover leads to a Monica Lindsay basket, and it'll be a timeout. John Harden. Seems like we're experiencing some speaker problems here in the building. Uh, a lot of uh, static from the uh, microphone and the PA announcing system. Again, we are so thankful for the sponsors we have. E-Town Exterminating is a locally owned, family-run pest control company and has been serving Hardin, Mead, Grayson, and Nelson counties in, our, in the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. So 54-35 with 6.27 to go. A couple of uh, breakout turnover and easy layup baskets. About three or four of those here in a row have uh, blown this game wide open as um, since the half. The Lady Bulldogs have only scored eight points, and the Lady Bruins have uh, been very effective. Tidwell trying to drive to the basket. Going to call a foul on the floor. She was able to get around Gray, and they're going to call the foul on Gray. Page is third. Inside to Tidwell. She's trying to back Page down, unable to do so. Gets it out to Clay over to Young as they're moving the ball well again. Tidwell looking to drive again. She's around Gray to the basket, unable to get it. Caden Kendricks then on the rebound. Again, out and running go the uh, Lady Bruins. Monica Lindsay with another bucket. Missed bucket by Kiana Clay, another rebound for Caden Kendrick. She's starting to get on the glass here a little bit more, be a little more active here late in the uh, late in the game. Drive and dish out. They're going to call a foul on the floor. 
Calling a block on Paris Parker. I believe that's her first. Lady Bruins will bring that in. Mallory Reed checking in for Paige Gray. Ooh, yeah, they're going to call a foul on Caden Kendrick. She was uh, moving screen. I think she knew it as soon as that happened. That's her fourth foul of the night. 5.25 to go. Paris Parker up top, loses the ball, poked away by Kanai Kendricks. Given back to her, and she's going to score it. Monica Lindsay got it back to her, so a good job there. Kanai Kendricks, her first bucket of the night. She is a defensive stopper, but her scoring can be sporadic. Some nights big nights, other nights not so much. Good defense on Kiana Clay. Clay gives it up to Young. Young into the lane. Kettle Hake with the rebound, unable to get it to go. The foul on Reed. So Kettle Hake will go to the line. First is good. That is her third point of the evening. Callister going to check back in. She's gotten, she was one of her first <laughs> rests of the evening. She did not, she has not come off the floor much, but a short stretch there to get on the bench and get a little rest. And 4.44 to go. Kettlehake's second is good as well. So Kettlehake with four and four rebounds to go with it. Kanai Kendrick unable to get that one to go. Kettlehake with another rebound. She does all the little things for this John Harden team. And that time, not a good pass. Oh, great play by Kiana Clay to get the ball back to her team. Just off for McAllister. Young trying to put it up, blocked by Mallory Reed. Young on the rebound. Clay down the lane, just off. Another foul on Reed. Clay knocks down the first. Very active in the first half for five points. That's her first point of the second half. Mallory Reed checking back out. Paige Gray back into the lineup. Clay just off on that attempt. Lindsay with the rebound. Great ball movement. Oh, can't finish. Stealing back in. Nia Kendricks getting her second bucket. Another turnover by the Lady Bulldogs as they're struggling now to hang on to the ball and to protect it. That's what I was talking about pre-game. That's a foul on Monica Lindsay trying to get another steal there. I think that's her first of the evening. One and one, and Kiana Clay will be going to line. But as I was saying, pre-game, I was talking about how Kiana Clay has to take care of the ball as the point guard, as do all of the... Uh, Lady Bulldogs, and that just continues to be a kind of an Achilles heel for this squad is just being able to handle the ball and, and just take care of it. They can do a lot of other things well. Rebound, Gray gets it out to Monica Lindsay. Lindsay just ahead, double team now. Somebody's open. Gray is open in, this, on the, in the corner, but there's Kendrick. Gray for three. It's on the way, just off the back iron. Alyssa Lindsay now with another rebound. Krista Cecil cutting, couldn't handle it. Gray, foul by Kettlehake. I believe that's her first, maybe second. Kanai Kendricks will check out with 321 to go there. D. Hilbert back in.
Krista Cecil trying to cut into the lane and the uh, ball is blocked and they're gonna call that a, a held ball. And she was cutting on the inbounds play. Monica Lindsay to inbounds. Cutting to the ball. Gray has it up just off the back rim. A big collision there as Dee Hilbert and Christine Kettlehake have collided heads. 3.11 to go here and uh, Kettlehake holding her nose. Hilbert, uh, I think there's a little blood there. We've got something popped open on Kettlehake there and Hilbert's still down. Uh, again, her the top of her head, forehead maybe, into Kettlehake's mouth as they were going for a loose ball. 3-11 at 60-38, Lady Bruins. As uh, both girls are being attended to, uh, Christine Kedelik just sitting on the bench, kind of wiping at her uh, mouth and nose with a, um, with a towel. Uh, Dinah Hilbert still down on the floor, sitting up now. To be honest with you, folks, I have no idea whose ball it's going to be here. The ball kind of got loose. Uh, I think uh, the Bull Lady Bulldogs had it, but in my eyes were focused on the collision that occurred. And uh, at first, both of them kind of it seemed like they were just going to look at each other. <laughs> like, what just happened? And then both of them went to the ground. Take a moment here while they continue to attend to Diana Hilbert. She is going to get up <laughs> to remind us this is an HCC TV student production. A division of Hardin County School. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Mark Harris Company, and E-Town Exterminating. So we will be back to action here. Uh, Diana Hilbert just kind of holding her head on the bench. It looks like she's going to be okay. The trainer is attending to Christine Kettlehake on the bench. I don't know if it's teeth or nose. It looks like teeth and lip to me that they're attending to. Clay will be bringing it up. I think the uh, the, the game is a foregone conclusion. Almost more concerned with the well-being of the players here, but we've uh, got Tidwell passing it out to Young. Gray with a steal. She's bringing it up the floor, giving it off to uh, her point guard, Monica Lindsay. Monica bringing it back out top. Alyssa with the ball. She's wide open. She'll take the three. Just a little short. Jaden Young quick to the ball for the rebound. Ball being brought up the floor. Tidwell gives it to Parker. She couldn't get a shot off. 2.30 remaining. It's going to be McAllister for three in the corner. Way off. Monica Lindsay with the uh, rebound, but stolen by Tidwell. Given up to McAllister. McAllister will score. Been a while since McAllister put one in the basket. Steal. Clay comes up with it. And they're going to call a charge on that one. Kiana Clay, uh, Monica Lindsay taking the charge. She was set up. Kiana Clay picking up her fourth. So no bucket. Oh, wait a minute. They're giving, them, giving her the bucket. And the foul after the shot. So Clay with the layup. Kanai Kendricks to the rim and the bucket easily. She had like a three-on-one off of an inbounds. I'm not sure how that breakdown occurred, but Kanai Kendricks with her sixth point of the evening. Again, a lot more going on late here, 146 and counting here. Good pass inside to Young. She's working it back around. McAllister open for three, not able to get it to go. Young with the rebound. Nicely done, Jaden Young. For her fourth point of the evening, she's able to go up over Kanai Kendricks and get the rebound. Full court pressure here. And another turnover. So they've turned it over to the Lady Bruins the last two possessions. As we're going to see with 125 to go, wholesale substitutions for the Lady Bruins. 
Bailey Bell, 30 in the lineup. Twelve Harper Hines and number 45 Madison Wilcox checking in. Rihanna Butler in for the Lady Bulldogs. Ball tapped away by Monica. Alyssa picks it up, gives it back to Monica on the drive. They're going to call that a clean block. Get the eighth graders checking in for the uh, Lady Bruins. It's Kanaya. <laughs> checking in, Kanaya Jones and um, Juliana Stith checking in as well. Tempted pass into Bailey Bell, just a little too high for her. Sean Tidwell bringing it up, guarded by Madison Wilcox. Around she goes and into the basket and score. Sharon Tidwell, Juliana Stith with the ball. Again, a lot of pressure in the backcourt right now. Ty Jones trying to get it to Bailey Bell off of Bailey's hands. A little bit of an ill-advised pass, but on the money, but just in a lot of traffic. Juliana Stith foul on. Destiny McAllister going to the basket, 62-44, 35 seconds remaining. And uh, McAllister will, that's uh, Julian Assist second. McAllister will have two free throws, maybe? Yeah, two free throws during the double bonus. Knocks down the first. Her first free throw of the night. And makes the second as well. McAllister having a heck of a night. 15 points. Bell with the ball. Wide open by herself. And, uh, under the basket is Madison Wilcox. And nobody looked up to see her. Excuse me for a moment. Trying to adjust my mask here. This mask with the uh, headset is sometimes a little difficult. All right, I think I got it. 26 seconds, 62 46 and counting. Count of Clay with the ball, gives it up to McAllister on the left side. Tidwell down the lane, loses the ball. Stith with it, going to give it ahead to Madison Wilcox, unable to get her the ball. So turned over. Madison Wilcox has been open a couple times, just unable to get her the ball for the easy layup. Number two, Janiah Drain checking in for the uh, Lady Bulldogs. She'll trigger the inbounds pass. She's checking in for Kiana Clay, it appears. Yep. So the Lady Bruins here in the last eight seconds, they will go to 1-0 and and the John Harden Lady Bulldogs to 0-1. Young with the ball, two seconds remaining. McAllister's going to take a long three and unable to get it there. And so, uh, again, Lady Bruins, uh, I believe, just kind of wearing down the uh, Lady Bulldogs, and, and that is the end. So uh, this is an HCEC TV student production, a division of Hardin County School Special. Thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, Blue Ribbon Renovations, and Mark Harris Company, E-Town Exterminating. We would also like to thank NFHS, National Federation of High School Sports, and its support in providing live streaming service. Contact NFHS.com to subscribe today. So uh, a good start to the season, a very competitive game, and uh, just a, a good finish by the Lady Bruins. And um, we'll be back with more high school basketball action in the days to come. Check your uh, listings for the uh, dates and times of games. And uh, this has been Paul Gray. And we'll just say good night, everybody. This has been a Hardin County Educational Community Television production. Live local sports are on Brandenburg Channel 1. And all rebroadcasts are on Brandenburg and Comcast Channel 2. Spectrum Communications Channel 184 and on our YouTube site. Also check out our live sporting events on nfhs.com or visit us at harden.k12.ky.us. Hardin County Educational Community Television, located in Hardin County, Kentucky.
a division of Hardin County Schools, airing on Brandenburg, Comcast, Spectrum, and also airing online. Providing live coverage of local high school sports. Covering community and school events. While teaching students along the way. HCEC TV, the area's leading educational and government access channel. Training the next generation of media arts students. Control your home even when you're not there with Brandenburg Telecom's home automation service. Turn lights on and off, lock and unlock doors, and change settings on your thermostat using your smartphone or tablet. Stop worrying whether or not you remember to close the garage door and save money by programming your thermostat to reduce energy used when you're not home. Call Brandenburg Telecom for a free quote and enjoy the convenience of having home automation, phone, TV, and internet service, all from one local company. All right, son, you ready to open your first savings account? Yes, I am. West Point Bank has been growing with our customers for over 30 years. We know what it takes to support them in every stage of their life. You need a bank that you know and trust to help you reach your goals and make your dreams come true. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal helps keep America clean. Got a car that needs to be scrapped? Old refrigerator not working? We pay Todd down. Call Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling today. Family owned and operated. For over 40 years. Premier Metal Recycling Company, we even handled the unloading. Waddell's Auto and Scrap, now with two locations. Do your part. Keep America clean. At Physical Therapy Associates, our approach to care is patient first. We know how important it is for our patients to return to work or play or just day-to-day -day life, which is why our highly trained and experienced staff treats everyone that walks through our doors as a friend. With six locations across Hardin, LaRue, Nelson, and Meade Counties, we are committed to being there for you when you need us. Give us a call at 270-234-1569 or visit us at physicaltherapyky.com. Physical Therapy Associates, friends helping friends. Zero, zero, zero. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company offering zero interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment, please call Michelle at 270-763-3186. E-Town Exterminating, a locally owned, family-run pest control company, has been serving Hardin County and the surrounding area since 1976. E-Town Exterminating provides pest control for residential and commercial properties. E-Town Exterminating on Ring Road in Elizabethtown. Phone 737-6900. E-Town Exterminating, what the buzz is all about. For additional information on HCEC TV programming, call 270 769 8855 or email Gina Ryan at harden.kyschools.us. On behalf of HCEC TV, we would like to thank all of our live covered sponsors.